This is about the story of two little kids, ages 8 and 10. They were terrible troublemakers, to the point that everything that something bad happened in town, chances were that those two kids were involved somehow. The parents didn't know what else to do. So they decided to take these two kids to talk with the rabbi. And the rabbi wanted to talk to them, but one at a time. So he asked one of the kids to come into the studio. The rabbi sat in front of the kid, looked at him seriously, and said, where is God? Little man, where is God? The kid didn't say anything. So the rabbi said again, where is God? And the kids ran away from the rabbi's studio. He went to talk to his brother. He said, dude, we're in serious trouble. God is missing, and they think we did it. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to talk to you today about hurtful words. Hurtful words. You see, this sermon came after, and by the way, this is the funny thing. I think I told you this before. I was about to give you a different sermon, okay? And then I changed my mind. I don't know why I worked so hard to prepare a sermon. And then within the last day, I, <laughs> I feel something else. So what happened is I have a different topic. And then on Thursday, I was teaching Trollheim. And I got inspired by something else. Let's grab the other one. And this is my message. The good thing is I keep everything on my computer, so I already have Vaigash for next year. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened is we were studying about, and I, and I presented the concept of a ranking for the mitzvot, for the commandment. Have you ever thought about that? Which mitzvot are more important than others? It's, uh, it's very interesting. So I did a little research, and I realized that the rabbis tried to avoid that. They always discourage try, trying to create a ranking. Until you get some, to some mitzvot, for example, with the Talmud, which said, uh, Talmud Torah keneget kulam. It will say that the studying Torah it's, uh, it equals all the mitzvot. So it's, it, it, give me a break. If you tell me not to make a ranking, that seems to me that you understand that this mitzvot is more important than the others, right? And then I realized that there are different methods to rank the mitzvot. Number one is based on the severity of the punishment. Because the Torah will actually explain what punishment will come for some kind of violation of breaking certain mitzvot. Some were, will bring the capital punishment, some will be lashes, some will be a fine, so forth. Okay, so that's one way of ranking the mitzvot based on the severity. The other one is by rabbinic preference, as I mentioned before. For example, studying Torah or giving tzedakah, sometimes it's described as equaling all the others. So why? Because the rabbis decided that, because they liked it. They liked it better than others. And the other one, the other method that I think is also very common, is by our, the, the permission that we have to break other commandments to fulfill that one. Okay? So if you use that method, for example, the most the, the, the highest, the highest mitzvah that you can fulfill in this world is pikuach nefesh, saving a life, right? Why? Because to save a life, you can break all the other mitzvot. If it's Shabbat, right, and you have to drive to the hospital to take somebody that is sick, you have to. So you can break Shabbat or Yom Kippur to save a life. So if you use that method, saving a life, pikuach nefesh, rank number one. But there are other two, for example, that they, we, that they also gave us permission to break certain rules. One is Shalom Bait. Have you ever heard about that word? Shalom Bait, peace in the home? Right? So to preserve peace between husband and wife, you can be flexible and lenient uh, with certain commandments. Not to, so to avoid starting a fight inside a house. But there is another one that I believe ranks number two, even above Shalom Bait, and that is, that is the prohibition against embarrassing other people. And I was researching that that ranks very close to Pikuach Nefesh, very close to saving a life. And the rabbis insist that we have to do whatever we have to do 
to avoid embarrassing another person in public. And that starts because we, we have a mitzvah in the Torah that says we have the obligation to rebuke. I said, but if, if you have to do it, you have to be sure that there are no people around you. Because if you embarrass somebody in front of other people, they say that equals to shedding blood. In other words, in the words of the rabbis, embarrassing people, uh, it's at the same level that committing murder. murder. Even more. This is fascinating. The rabbi said that there is a biological response from the human body to remind us that embarrassing somebody is like shedding blood. And that is that when you embarrass somebody, the other person's face goes red. And immediately after you see that red, then you go pale. And that's why embarrassing somebody in the language of the rabbis, is malbim panim, which means whitening of the face. Fascinating. And he it says it's very important because sometimes we embarrass people and we don't realize how serious it is. That's what is a biological response. So we understand what we did. To the point that the rabbis say that if, if you commit murder, right, after a punishment, you still have a place in the world to come. But if you embarrass somebody, you don't. Why is that? Because sometimes we don't realize that we're embarrassing somebody, and we never repent. When we kill somebody, or when we do something bad, we realize how bad it is. And then we have the chance to feel remorse, and to repair the damage, or to try to, to, to do something, so you repent, you can do teshuva. But we go around offending people in front of others, embarrassing people, hurting with our words, and we never repent because we don't realize how bad it is. Well, this week's Parsha brings a reminder of that. Joseph knew it. I believe that Joseph was conscious of how bad it is to embarrass, embarrass somebody in front of other people. You will see that before Joseph revealed himself to his brothers, he asked everybody in the room, to get out. Have you noticed that in the Parsha? Why would Joseph do that, asking everybody to get out? Because he knew that once he would say to his brothers, I'm Joseph, they would be embarrassed for everything they did. In fact, that's exactly the word that the Torah uses. That once Joseph said, Ani Yosef, I'm Joseph. They said the brothers were speechless out of embarrassment. So Joseph got it right. They were embarrassed, but Joseph spared them the extra pain of being embarrassed in front of all strangers. As a reminder of how careful we have to be with our words, especially when there are people around. Now, this is, uh, this is very interesting because Joseph is showing us how uh, despite the pain that he suffered, despite of the bitterness uh, as a consequence of his brother's actions, he was able to control himself and to show us that sometimes love is way better than hatred. And believe me, if there is somebody in the Torah that had reason to hate his brothers, that was Joseph. And, he, and uh, most people when they have the opportunity to pay somebody back by embarrassing the person in front of others, they will go for it. For way less of what the Joseph suffered, but not him. He, will say, he was able, able to let go all that pain and to forgive his brothers. And the sign was that he restrained himself and never embarrassed them in public. So there was no public shaming as a way of payback. And you know what else is interesting? That we read this Parsha every year, right before the fast of the 10th of Tevet. You know there is a fast, the 10th of Tevet, which is next Tuesday, by the way. So just a reminder, if you come to Daily Minion next Tuesday, there is no breakfast. <laughs> come anyway, right? Show me that you're not coming for the coffee. But uh, because it's a day of fast, Asarave Tevet. 
the 10th of Tevet. Why is that the, the, the fast? Well, it's the day where Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, decided to attack Jerusalem. So he came to Jerusalem and be, be, he began the siege around Jerusalem. Okay? Eventually, the next stage will be the 17th of Tammuz, when the siege was completed, and then uh, Nebuchadnezzar breached the walls of Jerusalem, and eventually the 9th of Av will be the moment where Nebuchadnezzar destroyed the temple. Okay, so this is a one, two, three. This is the beginning of the siege. And the rabbi said that when we come to the 10th of Tevet, that starts this process, that it will end with the destruction of the temple, we have to remember first the, uh, why the temple was built, and second, why the temple was destroyed. And you know that there is a beautiful midrash about the building of the temple. How did God decide where to build the temple? And the midrash said that there were two brothers that they lived in opposite sides of a mountain. Okay? One of the brothers was very rich, but he has no children. The other brother was very poor, but he had many children. So the one, the poor with the children, he was thinking and said, you know what? I have so much joy from my children and my brother has no children. So you know, I'm going to take some of my crop and secretly, secretly, I will give it to him so he can have at least a little bit of joy from this. They said that they, at the same time, the other brother, he said, I'm by myself with all these crops, and my brothers has all these children, I'm pretty sure that it will be good for me to bring some of my crop to him so he could enjoy a little bit more being with his children. So they said that secretly at night, both of them were taking some of their crop to the other. So what happened is in the morning, they would go see their crop, and nothing changed. And they couldn't explain why they still have the same thing that the day before. And this went like this for many years. And it was the big mystery. Until one night, for some reason, the two, the two of them decided to do it at the same time. And they encountered it themselves. Immediately they realized what was going on, that they were secret, secretly sharing their crop of, with each other. And the Midrash said that they had, and they cried and they understand how much they loved each other. And the Midrash said that we don't know who those brothers were, but we, we know is that mountain, mountain was Mount Zion, and that was the place where those two brothers hugged out of love was the place where the temple was built. Which is interesting, because the Talmud also says that the temple was destroyed because of hatred between brothers. The temple that was built out of love was destroyed out of hatred. And I feel that the fact that the temple hasn't been rebuilt, it means that we haven't learned the lesson. It means that hatred is still among us. And we have to learn from this week's Parsha. We have to learn from Joseph that what we need is to increase love. Even if that means that sometimes we have to let go all the pain that we've been carrying over. Because otherwise, we will never reach the point to hug each other with love and to let go all the bitterness. It's a beautiful reminder from this Parsha. And I hope that when uh, we enter into the Asara, the Tevet, the 10th day of Tevet, we can remember that it's this new year, 2023, one thing that we can do is to be careful how we use our words, because if we at least avoid shaming people in public, we can increase love and joy in this world. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Happy New Year, everyone.